Miss T for me, please. Nicole, uh, you are a, you blog, you uh, just write, write about tea in general. You do your YouTube channel, which has its own even little series in it. Um, you're a speaker, you're, you're an educator. Uh, you've been, you're definitely a uh, figure in the in a good way, the elite world of tea. Um, and you're also a person that's known me since my actual conception into the tea world. Um, and so, yeah, you're someone that I've, I've known a while and I was really, really excited to have you on and just talk a little bit more about tea. So, I mean, that's my own personal introduction to yourself, but if you have anything to add or just say hello. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm super happy to be on the podcast. It's been really cool to follow your journey, you know, through, you know, starting your company and, you know, all of the trials, tribulations and triumphs that come with that. You know, it's it's always great to see people kind of grow over the years. Yeah, um, I was I, I tell this story a lot, especially to like family and stuff. But the first right after I started the company, I planned a trip to New York City. And I know you were one of the first, I mean, probably the most person that I was talking to about coming. Um, and I was super excited that you yourself wanted to meet up. And then you were like, hey, well, let me talk to a couple other people. And, you know, here's a few other people that may be interested in coming. <clears throat> so I reached out and, um, I, you know, I looked up the accounts, but saw they were just notable tea people and kind of my brain stopped there. And just so I prepared, I brought the teas, I presented them. And I felt, excuse me, very comfortable and at home. And then after the um, meeting, I, we, Cassandra and I went back to our hotel and I actually like in depth looked up everybody who came. And I was, I was like terrified because I, if I had known the stature of some of the people, I would have been a nervous wreck. So it was such such an advantage that I just knew them as just people who wanted to experience tea rather than figures of New York City and stuff like that. Um, it was a real like kind of mind blowing situation, and it was a fantastic start to my journey as a vendor. Yeah, I'm so glad that that day feels like forever ago. <laughs> it was, um, I mean, but it was. It was just a really cool, like, just casually hanging out with lots of tea friends, drinking lots of tea, eating lots of good things. And yeah, it was definitely a good time. So kind of uh, getting into your stuff, I really want to talk a bit about your, yes, your YouTube page, but uh, your husband tea torture. So when I first saw that, you doing it. I was like, that's a cute concept. I was like, you know, that could be fun, but you don't know what you had intended for it or what direction you were hoping it would go, planning it would go, um, whatever, or even, you know, the, how long you were going to do it for, but it's been really fun to watch not only ev the evolution of like you and Jason tasting tea together and him exploring tea somewhat against his will, um, but it's been cool for me as somebody who really appreciates the tech end of tea and the skill that it takes to make a video um, and stuff like that. And it's been really cool to see you just every video you see, you, you just improved on something, improved on something, improved on something. And uh, some people are just so nervous to get content up that they just throw it up there and, and just, you know, hope for the best. But it's, it's been really cool to see you put not only content out there, which you've always done, but quality content. Thank you so much for that. It's been really fun. Um, Jason doesn't like to admit it, but it was his idea. <laughs> <laughs> and actually like I was at World Tea Expo in 2019. So like before, you know, everything happened with COVID and whatnot. And he had just kind of said it as a joke. And I mentioned it to a few friends and they were like, you need to do that. 
they're like, that's so funny. And he's like Mr. Class Clown that like, we were a good foil for each other. <laughs> that, you know, they were just like, they're like, I would just watch because he's funny. Like, they're like... <laughs> Um, and so it's been really like I didn't even really know where it was gonna go, um, you know. But it we're we just uh, did a live episode for episode twenty, so we've been really um, you know people responded so well that I was like we might as well keep doing them. Yeah, I there there are so many times where it's you know I'm I find myself being like that anxious anticipating. I get that anticipation when I start watching it, when you announce like what teas you're drinking. Cause then it's like, it's almost like you've gotten to know Jason's taste a little bit. So you're like, huh, oh, yeah. is he gonna, is he gonna like it? And then if he doesn't like it, what, in what way isn't he going to like it? Um, but I, what I would love to see something I was thinking about the other day that would be cool to see down the road is to see, to do comparative tastings with him and see if see if he's learned anything about you know what i mean like you don't have to like th- you know do anything prestigious he doesn't have to have like an advanced tea palette but i think that whether he wants it or not just by doing these and by drinking tea with you he's even in his subconscious building a palette so it'd be super interesting someday to see him go by like two teas of different quality and even if he hates them both, but be like, okay, like you're good at, at pulling stuff out of him without it looking laborious. Like you'll just sort of be like, okay, but what don't you like about it? And then that gets him to break down a little more. Definitely. He's, he's definitely gotten better. If you compare like episode one to like our more recent episodes, he's definitely kind of gotten better at describing things, even if he doesn't like it he can say why he doesn't like it instead of, I just don't like it. Um, You know, and it's, and that is, I always use him as my example because people always tell me, they're like, I can't taste tea like you. And I'm like, everybody can taste tea. Like, (laughs) unless you have like dysphoria or something like that, everyone can taste tea and no one's born with that vocabulary. Like it's a learned thing. So it really just, it's about taking the time to just notice tastes and aromas in the things you encounter every day and applying that to tea. Um, that it's, you know, it, he's definitely grown by leaps and bounds on that. So he's always my example to people that I'm like, if he can do it, you definitely can. <laughs> I always, people say the same thing to me and I always have such a like motherly or fatherly response to it. I'm just like, no, like, like if I sound poetic in how I describe a tea, it wasn't meant that way. I didn't, I didn't, I just, when I described teas early on, I developed this, I was really trusted my own gut. So whenever I take a sip, I literally just like almost get out of my visual, out of my eyes. I just go in my head and I say, what is the first thing that comes up? Not like what food does it taste like? Or just take a sip. What's there? And sometimes when people realize they're like, oh, wait, I don't have to say it tastes like raspberries or chocolate or wood. Like, I can just say that I like some little aspect about it. Like, it doesn't have to be so poetic. It's nice when it is. Every, everyone's different in how they describe things. Like two people can be tasting the same exact tea and you're not going to come up with the same tasting notes just because your perception is different. Your experiences in life is different. Um, You know, like when I'm doing reviews on my blog, I tend to be kind of more pragmatic. Like I'm not super, you know, woo woo, fluffy, you know, long descriptions. I'm just like, this is what the tea tastes like, you know? (laughs) Well, that's what Um, people want. That really is, in essence, that's that's just people want an idea from your perspective. Yeah, I mean, it just depends, too, because there's definitely bloggers that I read because I just love the way they write and the way that they describe things is very transporting. Shiloh? uh, I I personally love John's descriptions. Um, I haven't really had a chance to read a lot of tea descriptions from him. I've just known um, him for so long that like we'll yeah. talk about teas together. And Definitely. He's a person from 
he's another person who's known me since my very, very beginning. And I've always had an interesting connection with him in that even though he says it better than me, we have like the same, we describe T's the exact same way. But like, you know, I'm not lesser because I don't, like you said, use the fancy words and, and dictionary. You know, Definitely. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it, it can be just like T, I feel like it's as complicated as you want it to be. And it, it can just be as simple as you want it to be. Absolutely. That's what I like about T though, that it's, it's, you know, I feel like compared to other maybe things that like might be compared to like wine or something like that, I feel like they're very much like in a box that like this thing only tastes like that (laughs) where T I feel like partly because we don't have that culture yet. Um, but also that it's just, it is super subjective and it's done in so many different ways. And especially because the end user controls the end result too, um, that it can literally be anything you want. Um, another thing I really, really just wanted to make sure I got to is I wanted to ask top three, you don't necessarily have to do three for both, but just a little exploration into each. Uh, positive trends in the tea industry and not like, you know, not like you have to say demonize anything, but trends that you are keeping an eye on. Let's put it that way. Sure. Um, I definitely, it's kind of a buzzword, but I do feel like the industry has definitely, you know, just in the course that I've been in of the years that I've been involved, direct sourcing is the way forward that it's almost like, I don't think you can succeed in tea if you're just buying the same old tea from a distributor that 50 other stores are buying. And that's how the industry in the U S operated for a really long time. And it's not that there's something bad with that, but the competition is changing. And I think the consumer's desires are changing where I can DM a tea farmer on Instagram and buy tea from them. You know, that it's it's changed so much. Uh, when I first started my blog, I would take the subway to go to Whole Foods to get tea because that was the only place I could get tea. <laughs> um, where it's really, really changed so much in that decade. You know, uh, my blog will be 13 in October that it just really has transitioned so much in that time because of that. Um, so that's definitely, I think... Maybe it's more than a trend that it just like that's where I think we're evolving to. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's it's it is like I mean there you I'm sure you've they come and they go the businesses these days that just just literally open buy someone else's tea and sell it. Um, they might do okay once they open and there's that newness factor to them, but often with that structure you see them fade away. Definitely. And like you said, like, I mean, I think there's a place for everything. Like there'll always be a, a tea seller out there that repackages their tea and they do it well. They have, a, they survive, they pay their bills and all that. But it's like you said, the overall trend I definitely see is, is changing. Like, I don't think people always ask like, oh, like how long till Gong Fu is, is all over. And I was like, it, it would be a long, long time if I'm actually thinking about a, a theoretical date you could put a finger on. But yeah. I, w- I will say that what I'm noticing, because uh, I watch all the gong food businesses, I watch all of the like boba tea, tea cafe shops too. And I watch what they're doing. And I'm noticing a lot. They're at least all starting to offer a high end tea experience as well, which is, which is on their part. Why wouldn't you do that? Absolutely. And I, th- I think I've seen that being taken advantage of a lot more, especially even just the two years. Um, stuff's been weird, but I've, I have seen this very slight shift in, a, in I feel, the right direction uh, for things. I don't ever wit this. In the same token, I tell people, I don't want gong fu in every home. Because yeah. rare teas are good usually because they're handmade and made in small quantities. It's, you know, the Tivana curse. You can only quantify tea to a certain level before you start to waive quality. Definitely. I think, I don't know, in some ways, I feel like a lot of people in the industry 
kind of miss the mark where they keep saying like tea is going to be like coffee, you know, and it's like, yes, third wave coffee exists. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. But the average American is making coffee with a curtain. You know what I mean? Like they're, or they're using like an old regular, you know, coffee pot. Dunkin' Donuts. Thing. Dunkin' they're Donuts. Not like doing, that's, they're yeah. not doing pour over. They're not doing slow drip. You know what I mean? Like it's, there are certainly a large number of people that do, right. but it's never going to be the mainstream thing. Yeah. And I think it's the same with tea. Like you're not going to have everybody doing gung fu, you know, it's just not possible. It's and not. I find there's also like, I don't know, people get convinced, like they get so passionate about tea and I, I can be guilty of that because I love tea as much as I do, but they kind of get the mindset that like gung fu is the only way. And that just pushes people away from tea because it just makes you seem like a snob that like can't accept other things. And it's, there's so many ways to make tea. If somebody wants to do gong fu, they'll get there, but you can't shove it down their throat. You know, <laughs> sometimes I'll end a live session and I'll just be thinking about things we talked about and the position I took on it. And I'll just be like, Oh crap. Like that really made me that, that did not, I don't think looking at in review that it properly reflected how I felt about the discussion at all, but it, you know, it's, it's just like, a, I always, I got to ch check. I got to like, I'm a person who has to check myself. Like I am very aware that if I get too much flattery, I can get used to it and become kind of complacent and not really do what I meant to do to the, to the right amount that I do it. That makes sense. I think we all kind of have that tendency. But I, my, my main mission is like tr always has been and, and will continue to be just about just tea. And my, I use my mom as a classic experience. She is an Earl Grey tea bag drinker and that's it. That's, she has no interest, but she absolutely loves her cup of tea. And what it, for truly in retrospect, if she's enjoying it, who am I like that is really rude and snobby to just be like oh well she's wrong she enjoys um, it it's yeah no, the whole reason why I drink tea is because I grew up drinking you know bag tea with milk and sugar with my mom before bed every night um you know she still drinks more tea than I do it's just in a different way and it I don't know that can't be wrong you know what I mean like I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if she didn't do that yeah like uh, a lot of people, when we were taking our last trip, which you accompanied with us to New York City, um, a lot of people were like, oh, where, what gong fu places are you going? Yeah. Like what tea rooms? Well, it ate, and also it was a weird time for tea rooms. A lot of them Yeah, no open. one was really doing sit down service at the time. Yeah, this was like right coming out of the hole from COVID, the last kind of like shutdown ish era of it. So it was it was still young for that. But Cassandra and I really planned for that trip that it was like, we just want to get, go to a bunch of tea cafes, like tea shop, like tea, like not necessarily bubble tea shop, but like I call them tea cafes that do tea incorporated drinks. And like, we went to Ali Mama. Uh, I went to like just a couple of places and that was the point. It was, we wanted to enjoy tea that weekend, but not Gong Fu for once. It was like I had, we both had the desire to go and experience the, the cool tea shop culture in New York. Definitely. And it's one of those, like, I rarely go to bubble tea places, mostly because I don't like boba. <laughs> so that makes it difficult. But like that trip was super enjoyable because it was just like, just enjoying things without overthinking, without analyzing, without, you know, um, criticizing or anything like that just taking it in um and i have sent so many people to ali mama since we were there they <laughs> um, have to get the mochi donuts <laughs> they i ate almost i went there three times while we were in new york and i ate i think i think every i had one of every of their donuts except for the salty one um 
And I'm a, not above a tea person. I'm a huge baked goods person. Like I really, I, and I bake and cook myself. So I really appreciate when it's done well, not like hokey with all these like gimmicks and stuff piled on top, but just stuff that's made that's really good and interesting too. And I found them and I was just like, I got to try it. And both the drinks I had from there were just crazy in their own respect and just good and impressive in weird ways that I wasn't expecting, like the herbs that were put on top and the sparkly ice and stuff. It, interesting touches, but the mochi donuts were out of this world. Definitely. I mean, out of this world. Um, I've had a few since and they're pretty good. They, they, they haven't been as good as that. So I, I too, anytime I've seen someone in or going to New York, I'm like, definitely pop by just even if you're just grabbing a donut real quick like it's that type of place where you can just pop in and pop out definitely but yeah it was super fun i i felt so guilty that especially with how long we sat up outside that i didn't bring didn't bring any gong food to do because i we ended up sitting on that outside porch at my hotel for a while and then afterwards i was sitting there like that, you know, I really wish I had packed a little kit, but. I mean, by that point, we had all had quite a bit of, of tea and food and stuff, um, but it was nice to just hang out, you know, like yeah. I hadn't been around tea people for months prior to that. So it was nice to just like chill and, and talk with you and Cassandra and Marco. And yeah, it was nice. Um, have you, have you, how's your tea social life been? recently how's it um not a whole lot i did go kettle opened up a really amazing space in brooklyn yeah. um so when i saw they were opening i was like i have to go <laughs> and like i never go to brooklyn because for me that's like three trains it's kind of a pain from new jersey it's a long uh, commute yeah but i was like i am going because i have to um and it was definitely worth the trip and I made it a point to stop by a few places kind of like on my way into Manhattan. Um, and it just so happened that that weekend, um, Sylvan T, uh, mm -hmm. she happened to be in New York that weekend. So we were able to meet up and we just like got tea to go from Ipoto and like sat in Bright Park. And that was really nice. Um, I do have my first like actual in-person tea gathering on Friday. So yay, I'm like, I can't wait. <laughs> Um, and it's been rescheduled like twice. Every time I was supposed to have this tasting, there was a hurricane, literally. So, <laughs> so well, I'm very excited to finally actually go to an in-person together. The weather looks good, so I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. You'll yeah, be okay. I think I'm okay this time. <laughs> um, we have that curse too. Almost every time we've come to New York, uh, there's been a major. Remember the first time that I came there was all the subways flooded. Yeah. Like we had a couple of people that couldn't come meet up with us because they literally, there wasn't a transportation that could have gotten there. Yeah. I mean, especially because we were in Harlem too. So we were like way uptown that. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we have that weird. And then the first year Cassandra and I went to the Toronto tea festival uh, we, we kept checking the weather, checking the weather because we knew we were going up north in February and nothing, nothing, nothing. We wake up at like 5 a.m. To, to, to head out. And uh, it is, I'm telling you, not only just a snowstorm, an ice storm. Uh. So, but we look at each other and we're like, I'll be damned. Like, we've been so excited to, to do this. We had never been to Toronto together. So it was like, we have to. So we forged it. It, it cleared up by the time we got to Buffalo, but so we're at Buffalo at the border and the guy goes, Hey, I takes our thing. Hey, where are you guys heading in from? And we're like, Oh, we're, we're coming from Syracuse. <laughs> and he, he gives this weird look and he leans and he looks at the front of our car that is, has a, a, a shield of ice, like a thick <laughs> ice shield that's stuck and become like solid over the whole front of our car. And he goes, yeah, you guys did come from Syracuse. He's like, I'm glad that you made it. He goes, what are you, you know, what are you braving it to go for? My wife and I are like, T. And thinking like, uh-oh, like this might go bad or he might not believe it or something. And, and he goes, 
oh, tea, like uh, like oolong, like black tea. And we're like, yes. And he's like, hey, you have a good time. And like sent us on our way. <laughs> But it was That's so funny. Yeah, weather. It's it's there's something weird that happens with just weather and anything you have going on that you really are like excited about. Like that's the New York curse too. That's where yep. the Northeast. I think every time I've like talked with you guys like multiple times now about going with you to like the to the Toronto Tea Festival, and it just never fails that something catastrophic happens. Well, it's also tough because like I'm I am three and a half hours from the city of Toronto. Yeah, <laughs> like you are plus five and a half hours to that at least. Definitely, and. Yeah, it, that makes it difficult in itself, but it's a, I'm telling you, it's a beautiful festival. And after going for the past few years and watching it evolve, it's kind of like what I was talking about earlier with the positive trends that I see happening in within the tea industry. And you just, each year you see it, there's, and the vendors are learning from the other vendors in a good way. Like a couple, the first year we went, it was all tea and giant glass teapots or like hot pots that were, you know, dispersed to people. And then, but then there were a couple of gong fu people and they always had people hoarded around them. And uh, you could tell people started looking at that and they're like, okay, maybe, maybe we, we could do more like actual brewing there. And then the year after yeah. that, then you started getting more businesses that were participating in the festival that were like not only gong fu oriented but i can't remember their name but they were a chain they were from china they like you know directly work with the the producers in the res, in in the respective regions um and there they did a couple a couple white teas a couple green teas i, I mean out of this world like first of all the look of the leaves were impeccable like impeccable. And then the tea itself was good. And they, if you talk to them about their product, they know about it. It like, they're not less and less. You're seeing the booths that are just the representative that was given a, a packet to read and then sent out to the crowds. Um, Definitely. I know that's a necessity for bigger companies, but um, if you're smaller, it's just doing it yourself is really the, the best way. Plus, Toronto, Toronto has some great tea businesses. I've noticed that the, like the dedicated tea festivals, you're definitely seeing that more and more. Um, like the one in New York City, like it's a tea and coffee festival, but also they'll give booze to like the Wall Street Journal and like other businesses. So it's just not the same vibe, you know. Um, but um, I know like the Chicago tea festival was the first, like other than world tea expo was the first like dedicated tea festival I went to. And it was amazing. Um, I, that I wanted was... to go so bad, I, so bad. The fun that the FOMO, the, I mean, I'm not yeah. even talking about joking. Like, I mean, to the point where I would like almost start to like, well up just watching you, all you guys, to get all these people that I love just together, like not as tea celebrities, but just like a bunch of tea nerds, just like, like a party, a literal party of tea people. And the festival itself was organized very well by somebody who knew what they were doing, which helped. Absolutely. But for a first year festival, I could tell before it happened for sure that it was going to be out of this world. Definitely. So I was the, the amount of jealousy that I had and the drive that that gave me to make sure I make it to one of the Chicago. Um, you did a workshop, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I did one on dance on oolongs. Um, it was super nerve wracking because that was the first like tasting class I had done. Um, definitely should have had like a brewing assistant. Because I was basically double hand gong fuing the tea while talking. It worked. It was fine. Uh, but like they wound up like we sold out and then more people wanted to get in. And how do I tell somebody no? Like 
it was, uh, but it was great. It was definitely a really cool first experience for doing that. That's one that I'm, I, I am in, very insistent that I really need to make it to. Um, and like, like, like I was saying about Toronto, the, the quality of the vendors that are there, um, like uh, the last year of the Toronto Tea Festival, uh, my absolute favorite, like my, the tea I had the biggest impression about was Hoji Chako. Um, yeah. I mean, I was blown away. I had just found out about him and I was like blown away that like, whoa, these guys like literally do like really just Hoji Cha, which I like, but in my brain, I was like, how much diversity could, could there, could there be? But, you know, we're talking with them and we're laughing back and forth and they give me a cup and I remember just sipping it and just being like, wow, like not only an impressive roast of hoji cha but unlike anything i had had before yeah no i love that because like for most of my kind of tea career people always talk about hoji cha like it's like the throwaway you know that it's like oh these were just the stems that we were going to throw away so we just roasted them so we could sell them like that was always the impression that was given but it's not really the case and there's so much good hoji cha out there and there is a lot of diversity that I love that they really just found that like super niche within a niche. Um, but it really makes them stand out. Oh my God. And so I was so embarrassed because so I just learned about them when I was at their booth and it was like one of the only scenarios where they were like, Oh, we know you, you're, you're the unity guy. And I was like, I was so, so embarrassed. And I, at the end of the day, I was like reflecting on it and I was like, I'm so embarrassed and, and I'm ashamed because I liked their stuff so much and they were so nice to me that I just wish that I had knowledge about them prior. And so the next day I went and I just told them, I was like, guys, like, I I mean, really your tea blew me away. You guys are so, so nice. I go, have you ever tried a Japanese white tea? And they're like, they look scrunched eyes. Like, no, definitely not. (laughs) And I go, do you want to? And they're like, again, they're sort of like, okay, but they're not sure where I'm getting at. I literally pull out of my backpack, a giant bag of one of my Benefuki white. And I was like, do you have like a bag or something? They're like, yeah. I was like, here you go. I grabbed him a handful and I was like, thank you so much. Like, just like, enjoy that. Hopefully it's, it's something special. And, and the owner messaged me after he tried it and just had very, very kind words and, and not just generic. Hey, it was great. The, the, the notes were beautiful. Like it, it, it was, it was so nice to see that, that they were so appreciative of just the gesture. It doesn't matter how good the tea is, but just that there is that immediate connection there that it was just like good tea people and good tea people. It's a good. Definitely. Formula. And that's what I love about tea, that it is just like, it's very open. Everybody shares everybody, you know, like, World Tea Expo, that's what it is the whole time. Um, And that's what I love about it, that it is just like, it's not, you know, oh, look at that booth over there. We got to beat them or whatever. Like, it's not like that. Um, You know, it's obviously you want to succeed as a business and you want to be competitive in the market, you know, but it's, it's like everybody just kind of like, one thing they always repeat at World Tea Expo is rising tide floats all ships that it's like, if we all do good, we all do good. <laughs> you know that it's, yeah. Yep. Yep. My God. Um, what else did I want to, did I want to touch on? Oh, do you have, I mean, I'm sure you hear about it all the time. I'm sure you hear someone every now and then that's like, you know, I want to like do a dedicated tea festival in like the Northeast. I, I just, I'm blown away that it hasn't happened. Like, I get that it's very hard. I'm fully, I know what it takes to put on an event. But Definitely. I, I'm so blown away that there, because there's so many people between New York, Massachusetts, uh, Connecticut, New Jersey. I mean, mm-hmm. there's a lot of Gong Fu interested, to say the least, in that area. I'm very surprised yeah. that nobody's tried to I launch mean- that. There's a Pennsylvania tea festival, but it is very small and I don't really know anybody who goes. So I, and it honestly, like they say it's Philly, but it's really not. It's like some other small town that like you can't get to without a car. <laughs> yeah. 
So that's why I haven't been able to even go to check it out. Um, but it is, it is a lot. It's definitely something I've considered doing. I just don't know if I have the time and resources to do that. Right. And, um, and, and then make it worth your, your time. Like, and again, not that you money is your primary concern, but when it's, when you're taking on something that big, that that's gotta be a part of it because your, your time does matter. Like, I know we all want to like do everything we can to reach so many people. And usually that means by doing it for free, but uh, there is also a level where you get to where you do have to say, I hate you. Bottom line is, is that this is in a whatever volume of business and it has to get accounted for. Like, Definitely. I mean, especially in New York, like any space that you would rent for something like that is going to cost a lot you know, that it would be like, there's like art galleries and things like that, but it still costs money to use those spaces. So it is really difficult, first of all, to find a place that has electricity, <laughs> has water. <laughs> yeah. And the, the amount of electricity as well. I mean, that's something like voltage is, I mean, you think about how much one kettle generates and yeah considering everyone's bringing a different kettle and some kettles are made with zero efficiency, uh, power efficiency in them. And if you don't have a solid electrical system, it'll pop, it'll pop real Absolutely. quick. And once it pops once you're, th- it just keeps doing it. Yeah. You're, you're in trouble. So I'm, I get it. I get that it's hard. I get, but it's like, there's just so many super passionate people that I'm so surprised that I mean, up like upstate, it's easy to do easier to do events. Yeah. Like, like, yes, you can rent out places, you know, for maybe like a hundred bucks, 50 bucks, depending on the place and what you're doing. But like, also because it's upstate and we're not like as competitive, it's like, there are, you can like reach out to people and just be like, Hey, your friend that has that yoga studio, you think we could use it like after it's closed? And they're like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd probably do it for just a little bit of tea or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like there's lots of like little trades you can do like that. But in New York, I'd I'd have to guess that those types of situations are pretty few and far between. Definitely. It's kind of an I mean, we'll, thing. We'll see. You know, it's it's definitely evolving, you know, and we do have quite a lot of really good tea places now. So I think that that's something that I think will come in the future. I just don't know who's going to do it. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, like that's, that's the main, and that's the main thing. Like you look at any tea festival, you look at Toronto, the, the big, the big people always, and they'll always be there is uh, Camellia Sinensis and Tau. Yeah. Because they're pretty native to that area. And essentially they're they're kind of some of the bigger players helping put it on so a lot of people sometimes are like not like really complaining but just sort of like oh you know kevin from killing the census is talking again and it's like well yeah i mean it's not his, his who's, festival who's but probably kind of financing the festival you know if they're like the major sponsors yeah, I, I, I met uh, Linda Gaylard, of course, also an amazing tea writer, an amazing person out in Toronto. And one of the last times I was there, she was like, oh, well, let's, we need to get a picture together before we head out. I'm like, okay. So she taps yeah. on this tall Asian gentleman's shoulder. And she's like, oh, could you, could you take a picture of us real quick? And like, yeah, 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 yeah. He goes up <laughs> and takes a picture. And uh, she goes, oh, Jeffrey, you know, this is Mr. Tao. Like he puts, I'm like, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I was like, sir, I'm sorry you had to just take my picture. I'm not anyone of, of like true stature. And then he <laughs> he like literally acknowledges like, you know, just knowing of my existence that I was I was in there somewhere. I was just like, oh, my God. And I think that's another magical thing about the tea festivals is like I get somewhat starstruck sometimes. But as soon as I the person comes over and says, hey, or I say hey to them it's like talking to a friend immediately. Yeah. That happened to me. I was like wandering in the hallway of the convention center at world tea expo, trying to find the bathroom. And Kevin Gascoigne is just like, Oh, it's over there. 
And I'm always like, I'm always like never expecting that someone's going to remember who I am. Like, and it's not like putting myself down either. It's just, they're very busy people. They talk to a lot of people all over the world. So I don't expect Definitely. them to, but I'll tell you something. Kevin takes, he always is able to put aside an amount of time to just pull me aside and have a one-on-one with me. And it's like, again, it's like, I haven't done anything for him. I'm not a, a partner. I don't sell his tea. I don't, but it's just, I've told him how much I, you know, just admire what he does, appreciate what he does. And he was one of the companies when I was first really getting into tea and started like doing little write-ups and reviews. Uh, he, he was the first time I tasted Shan Lin Chi. Was sent yeah. to me. Like he didn't just send me his bottom of the barrel teas to sample for free. He sent me legitimate tea and he's always been uh, just a phenomenal person to me. And then over the years, I've found out truly how big and predominant of a player he is. And it, it just makes me, it doesn't like, it doesn't inflate my head. It just warms my heart more. So definitely it's finally yes. fall. And, uh, which is so exciting for me because that usually means that I'm going to get a lot of flat, fresh blood, get a lot of newer people or people that have been hibernating on their tea hobbies. And I'll tell you, for me, I don't, for you, it's so exciting to, to do those somewhat introductory. This is what this is. And like Q and A's with people. It just, I absolutely love it. Definitely. So what's your, what's your, if you can share it, what's your event that you have going on this weekend? Oh, um, Anna Yi, um, she's, um, actually she was a member of my like teacher training course that I was taking, uh, with being T. And so she's doing, um, there's like a pop-up in Chinatown and she's doing like, um, just scheduled tea tastings where you can get a ticket and, you know, she'll go through, and they built this like amazing silk tea house with tatami mats. And like, yeah, I'm really, really jazzed for it. Please take, please share some photos of that. Definitely. That sounds amazing. Um, the other weird, like crazy thing is a lot of people ask me like, cause I've gone to a couple cities and obviously tea is always the thing I scout out when I go there. Um, people always ask like, of all the places you've been, like, where is like the best tea? Huh. Like, if I were to go to one titty city, oh God, <laughs> I easily would say New York city. It is, uh, you might have to pay for it, which, which, yeah. means, which means it like New York city, things can get very expensive, but say you do have money to spend and you really want to like taste some high quality tea. I think New York City of the places I've been is is has by far the best. Definitely. And they're kind of centrally located near each other too that like you could literally just do a crawl of just walking kind of like, you know, East Village, Nolita, um, you know, into Chinatown, you can hit most of the major tea places in New York City just in those areas. Um, you don't even need the subway or anything, you know, walk off the caffeine in between, grab a snack. Um, but I've definitely done that, you know, with friends that visit that we're just, you know, go on a total crawl where we just hit every tea place that we possibly can. And it's great. Yeah. I miss those, man. I miss seeing those stories from you guys. Like it always give me like that heartache for like, I'm so close, but so far, like just, just, I know <laughs> just seeing you guys do like you did des tea dessert tours. You've done just like gong fu crawls, like, uh, gosh, those were you and Sarah and, oh, definitely have you, um, and then you, so this is something that I, I don't know if it ever came to fruition or whatever, or you're still working on it. Are you still considering uh, authoring a book? Yes. Uh, technically, I mean, I can tell you a little bit, but I, you cannot uh, air oh. it. I <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. We'll, we'll, we can talk about it on text then it after, oh, after yeah, the yeah. podcast. Um, but that's, Ooh, that's exciting. Okay. Um, 
I so again a, long, a while ago you you had just mentioned that there was a possibility that you were you know going to be doing a book about you know tea and just were fishing for the idea and feeling it out and stuff. Um, and I was just like, perfect. Like of all the people to write a book about tea, like you're one of like just because of where you are, your interaction with the tea world, your the diversity of of people and knowledge that you have connection to that you're the type of person that I think makes some of the best tea books um oh, I, thank you for that I, I, truly, uh, I, I really do I got very excited when you just mentioned the just mere thought of thinking about it thank you yeah it's it's definitely something I think partly because people do ask a lot that like whenever I do like an interview or something they're like so what are you writing a book and I'm like <laughs> I would like to. It is a huge undertaking to write a book. Um, so it's tricky sometimes, you know, I, I want to find an angle that's like new, you know, I feel like a lot of tea books kind of follow a similar formula and I would love to find something that can really be a unique approach. There are tea books that are the basic uh, information about tea that are told from a person's point of view. So there's little twists on each book to the person who's authoring it. But then there's tea authors that pick these just interesting, like you said, angles to go in. Like the the poor the poor book. I can't ancient caravans and urban. Oh yeah. Tea. Holy crap! I'm not the biggest poor person but easily the best tea book I've ever written. And it's because of how she wrote it. I felt like I was just talking to a friend, like checking in every day when I read a chapter, them just telling me what was going on as they were learning about tea from tea. Yeah. It was so one-on-one. Definitely. And the crazy thing with that book is it's actually a scientific study that they just like published as a book that like, it doesn't read that way at all. (laughs) I didn't even know that. I, it's if people haven't read it and they're you know and they're they're listening to this whatever I'm telling you that is of all the tea books I've read that has been by far one of the most insightful and interesting absolutely and then you were you just did a video and that's the other cool thing is that you I should mention is that you don't just do the husband tea tortures you do a bunch of other just tea related videos and you've been putting them out on a really nice regular semi regular basis. And um, you just did one on books, uh, tea history books. And uh, the one I mentioned to you, The True History of Tea, it, it's, like I said, very dry. It is the whole history of tea and the countries that were involved at that time from the beginning of time until pretty present. And, and, and it's very encyclopedic, like very, so it's, it's a, for me, at least, it was a really hard book to get through, but holy crap, like you were talking about just, you know, books that you should read if you are interested in the history. Um, and the ones that you, a couple of you brought up, I had never heard of. So they're in my Amazon cart. Thanks to you. Yeah, I definitely, I'm a bookworm just in general. So that definitely spills over into my tea life that like, I just, I have, you know, the bottom of like my bookcase that's always behind me, my videos is just filled with tea books. Um, So it's, it's definitely, you know, it's one of those, I I just, I like to share them because I feel like there's so many tea books out there that it's hard to know really what you're looking for. What's the best book for you? Yeah, that's, Ooh, that's a, that's a tough one. That's why sometimes people will be like, I'm just getting into Gong Fu. I'm looking for some books to read. And it's like, what are you into? Like, are you, do you, or how far do you want to go? Like, um, there, but there is a book for everything. And then there's also, there's 80 degrees magazine, which is just like, I love 80 degrees. Yeah. I, I don't know why you wouldn't be, uh, subscribed to it. Um, and a lot of people are like, Oh, like $15 or whatever for a magazine. I'm like, first of all, that's what magazines cost anyways. And the, it's not a magazine. It's a book. No, It's a, it's a book of really well curated authors and, and stories. It is, it's a, Definitely. it is a must. Sub- I would even say, don't even just buy it per issue. Like I would literally advise people to subscribe to it. Definitely. 
And it's one of those, it just makes my like bookworm heart happy that every issue comes with a matching bookmark. It just really makes me happy. <laughs> I I did get hysterically excited when they started doing the the bookmark. I was like, oh. Like it's silly, but it just, I love it, yeah. <laughs> well, prior to that, I only had one tea bookmark and it was in like my goodie bag from one of the Toronto tea festivals. Um, but often I'm not reading just one thing at a time. So I'd be like conflicted over, over which bookmark to use. But now, even if I'm not reading the magazine, now I have so many good tea bookmarks that I can use. Well, we're, we're just rounding up on my, on my wonderful time. Want to make sure we don't get, don't get cut. Um, sure. if you want to kind of give out your, social medias and or you know what formats you're on and what you're involved with if people are don't know about you and are interested in following you more uh, sure so my website is t for me please.com um and i'm on pretty much every social media platform as t for me please except for tiktok because some jerk took my name so they're the real t for me please <laughs> appropriate <laughs> appropriate well, uh, thank you a million times for joining me. Um, it was it was much needed and much appreciated that you were able to put some some time aside. Um, I do hope that this uh, you know podcast takes off to some degree. I'd love to have you on again, um, but I just uh, wanted to have you on a because you're an interesting person, and b just you're you're definitely a person. I thought about the right word, and I truly think it's admire that I admire oh. you. I think that you, uh, for being the stature that I think you are in the tea industry, I think it's mind blowing how easily approachable you are and, and um, just how much your heart truly is in it. And it's, it's, it's it admirable. And uh, you're, I think you're definitely one of the most valuable kind of people that are around in tea today. So I appreciate you keeping me in the loop with what the industry as a whole is doing. Um, and yeah, I'll keep doing my best as a vendor to, to, to stay by some of the rules we talked about and ideals we talked about and just keep, you know, uh, at, at, you know, adding to the T world. So thank you a million times. Um, no problem. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Yep. And we'll be in touch. Please guys go subscribe to everything. Watch all our videos, like subscribe, comment, all the, all the good things. Um, yeah. So thank you again a million times uh, and cheers to you. All right. <laughs> Thanks.